Hey, so I tried making this entire tutorial series live commentary, but when I finished editing the first video, I realized that I had accidentally put my mic my microphone on mute during the entirety of the other two parts. Basically, I had 50 minutes of footage, but no sound. So what I've done is I've decided to record voiceovers for all the episodes, including the first one. So I suppose you could consider it a re-upload, but hopefully this is the way to go. Consistency is key after all. Hopefully you will enjoy it anyways. Let's go. To begin with, we're not going for a 100% realism. We're happy with our features being just believable, right? Uh, I'm personally not, in, not confident enough in my own knowledge surrounding like tectonics or geology. I, can, I don't feel that I can make a claim that this tutorial will be realistic, but it will be believable. I have released two new brush packs with the, what I call binary brushes, basically brushes that have hard edges instead of gradients. Uh, you can find both of them in the description below. I also had someone on Reddit asking to see my layer structure in Photoshop, and uh, you can see it on screen right now. There are nine layers for above C features, and that's based on my own style sheet that I currently use, where I have a maximum of nine colors. When uh, painting, I paint on the masks using the aforementioned brushes. By pressing X, I can quickly change between black and white to paint. And this file that you see right now, you're also able to download this in the description below. First things first, we have this white square at the bottom. This is used as a reference in Wilbur. The program always uses your highest point and changes it, or if you don't have a point that is 100% white as your highest point, it will change it to 100% white. And in, not in every case that we have, we want to have a pure white peak, right? So we just want to make sure that Wilbur never evens out the coloring so that we always have the same height difference in uh, when exporting from Wilbur as we had putting it or importing it. Of course, you can remove this if you wish, but for the purpose of this tutorial, I won't be removing it. You might recognize this landmass. It's Ireland, but mirrored both horizontally and vertically. The image height right now is about 3000 pixels and it's about 2500 pixels wide. Considering this, I want to keep the brush sizes down. This is due to it being really easy to lose track of the scale. If this was something I would do for my own world building project, I would not have a too dissimilar image size for an entire continent. And that's why I will start with a lower brush, brush size. I am starting on the 2000 meter layer because I don't want to have mountains that are that extremely high for this tutorial. No higher than 3000 meters is my goal. I also paint the 2000 meter layer as somewhat of a guide for the layers above and below. So we start off by painting some of the basic topology. We try to use different brushes and to keep an eye out for features that we want to keep. In this case, we're using the 05 binary large brush to create this ravine. By control and left clicking the mask, you can select the area that's painted and go to select modify and then contract selections. In this case, we're going to contract the selection by four pixels. Having a selection means that I can't paint outside of the selected area and make sure that there's a smooth height gradient between layers. Here I am using the first method for creating mountain peaks in this case. I call this snaky mountains, basically mountains that snake around. We do this by painting squiggly lines and then removing by pressing X to change colors. We're doing this to break up the shape. We can also go for a larger and quicker method, increasing the speed but reducing our control over the result. Remember that the shapes just have to be good enough, something I struggle with a lot of the time. It's going to look good in the end, no matter what. Don't worry about that right now and just keep painting. In the end, we will achieve some organic shapes and that's when I usually call that specific part of the map good enough and move on. This is where I start using a second method. I'm carving out. I'm using a larger brush and just dotting it out. And then I'm decreasing the size and using the smaller brushes to chip in on the larger shape. Keep in mind that some brushes have very repetitive shapes, so switching up makes this look a lot more organic. I also want to recommend that you rotate your canvas by pressing R and then dragging as you paint. This is because our brains prefer certain shapes and we will tend to unconsciously repeat them. 
So by rotating the map, we can keep painting these similar shapes, but from a different angle, tricking our brains into not seeing the repeating patterns as easily. Be careful when contracting a selection, as it can create these borders that remain, that we have to go in and manually remove. This is also when we start to use the third method, which I call highly detailed painting. We will use a brush of our choice so that we can paint out on a really, really small scale. We can create mountain ridges or ravines and erode certain parts that we previously painted. One thing to keep in mind when using this method is that the brush size will almost likely be the same size and that that will create a consistently wide path. I always try to break this up or to change brush sizes. Wilbur will help us obscure the consistency, but only to a certain point. And in this case, we have to be more thoughtful. We can also see that there are low areas completely surrounded by high areas. Wilbur will automatically fill these areas, giving us a, a few issues, which I will discuss in the next part of this tutorial series. But for now, just know that th it will cause issues and we should try and avoid it. Therefore, I usually try to break up the shapes and to make use of these areas. In my opinion, it helps the organic feel of the shapes. And yet again, it's an opportunity where you can see that different brushes have different uses. Skipping layers for a longer drop makes a difference when rendering. As you can see here, I skipped the 1500 meters layer and moved straight to paint on the 1000 meter. I usually do this to create a reference for myself. I find it easier to fill in the gaps between the shapes instead of painting everything one layer at a time. From this point on in the recording, I will show the video of me painting as a time lapse, and I will be back when it's time for us to finish this up. And there we have it, a somewhat finished height map. There's only one step left, and that is to add a solid black background and to put that layer at the very bottom. Thank you for watching this video. This is the first of three in this tutorial series. Make sure to subscribe not to miss the other parts or just to support my work. The higher the numbers, the better I feel about putting my time and energy into making these types of things.